This is a stunning 51 Assassin, a carbon gravel adventure bike from Ireland that aims to be as versatile and capable as you want such a bike to be, whether racing or bike packing. And in this video, we are gonna review it. I'll point out some cool features and details and some that really stand out in this very competitive market right now. We'll go for a ride and see how it performs and compares to other similar bikes, to about the price, specification, weight, and much more. Because I'm David and you're watching Just Ride Bikes. Let's dive in. Hands up if you've heard of 51. Some of you I'm sure have done. They are a Dublin based brand and have been around for a few years now and remade their name with custom carbon road bikes in terms of the construction, the geometry and the paint jobs of the bikes. And they have made some absolutely stunning bikes over the years. But this new Assassin, their first gravel and adventure offering is made in Taiwan using a more conventional frame manufacturing method. And this is no generic looking bike at all. Very, very distinctive indeed. We have a big muscular angular flat sided fork out the front, a tall deep head tube there, a sloping top tube, really skinny rear stays that aren't dropped and go right up to the top tube and the swooping dropped chain stays for maximum tire clearance. And tire clearance is 47 millimeters on a 650 or a 700 wheel size. So yes, you can run the big or small wheel depending on your personal preference. These for reference are 700C on a 45 mil wide tire. And then we come to the really interesting and unique feature of the bike, which really sets it apart from most other bikes in this category. Firstly, we have very progressive geometry, so it's long and slack compared to most road-focused gravel bikes, much more akin to that BMC Earth I reviewed a few years ago. And then we have adjustable geometry as well, with flip chips in both the rear dropout and the fork dropout as well. This idea isn't a new one. There's a GT grade, a giant revolt, but they either have it in the rear or the front, not both. This is the first time I've had a bike with adjustable geometry on the front and the rear. The flip chips and the fork adjust the trail of the bike, and I'll put a link to what trail is down in the description rather than spend a few minutes explaining it here if you aren't familiar with the term. What the trail does is affect how the bike steers and handles, and on the bike makes a big difference. And that trail figure is a lot longer than most other bikes. So on this bike, you can adjust it from 76 to 87. And for comparison and put that number in some sort of context, a specialized diverge is 57, so much, much shorter. And a BMC Erz, which is a similar sort of bike in terms of geometry, is 77. So this bike can go much longer than even that BMC Erz. And the idea behind that adjustment is to allow the rider to tune the bike to the riding they are doing. So if you're riding extremely technical, rough terrain in the mountains perhaps, or going bike packing, they want a super stable, rock solid setup, that longer trail will just calm everything down and make it super easy to ride over any sort of terrain. And then the shorter setting makes it a bit more agile for a more playful, nimble setting. Let's talk price and the frame set alone will cost you £3,000 with a choice of different colours and available in four sizes. And this bike here, I've been testing for the last few months, retails for £3,800, which seems a bit of a bargain. We get all the components and wheels and finishing kits for £800 more than a frame set on its own. So the bike I've got here has a Shimano GRX 1x11 speed mechanical group set with a mix of 800 and 600 components. So an 800 rear mech and then a 600 crank set and brake levers and brake calipers. And then DT Swiss 1800 wheels, WTB Riddler 45 mil wide tires. Up front, an Eaton flared drop handlebar and a zip stem seat post and a WTB saddle. This bike here, as you see it, size large without pedals, but weighed with the bottom cages is 9.2 kilograms on my scales, which is okay, it's not amazing. It's a light carbon frame, but the components aren't the lightest in the world, so you could certainly go lighter if you wanted. A 
Okay, let's get off road, see what this bike is all about. And it feels so different to most other gravel bikes I've ridden over the past few years. It's almost docile and nonchalant in its handling. So, so laid back. Feels almost lazy at first, but once you get used to it, oh my goodness me, it's a good off-road. Now my riding starts with a few miles of tarmac and a bit of a climb. And here the bike felt kind of lazy really to start with and didn't feel very good if I'm honest with you. But as soon as I got off-road and as soon as I put it down my rocky descent, the bike came alive and the geometry all made a lot of sense. Because when you're riding down a rocky trail, the geometry makes the bike so planted and so stable and so easy to carry a lot of speed compared to most kind of road bikes, gravel bikes. The front wheel isn't trying to take you out, it's not bouncing off rocks and roots, all while you're going absolutely flat out, rocks flying around behind you, leaving a dust cloud in your wake. It's just a ride to speed and capability. And I've mostly been riding the bike in the, in the middle setting, the kind of intermediate setting, the best all round compromise between that kind of extreme the bike offers. And it feels really good. I have experimented with the fork flip chip and it makes a big difference. It might be only a few millimeters on the actual fork itself, but on the trail, it makes a, a substantial difference and you really notice it. That longer trail, in the long setting gives you the most amazing handling, just so planted. You can almost close your eyes and the bike will just take care of things itself. It's that good. And even the shorter trail setting is so much calmer and rock solid than even a specialized diverge or a crux or a giant revolt. So it's a lot, a lot more planted than most gravel bikes. And the BMC Air is really the only bike I've tested that offers this kind of mountain bike inspired handling, geometry and steering balance. And that makes it fantastic if you are trying to ride the sketchier trails, the most demanding trails, really pushing the limits of these bikes. And you're going bike packing and you might encounter some big amount of descents or whatever it might be, because this bike will look after you. And especially important towards the end of a long ride when you're tired and fatigued and your mental focus isn't really where it should be. And the last thing you want to do is be really battling a, a nervous and twitchy gravel bike. Well, this bike, you, like I say, you can close your eyes and it'll just do the riding for you. So, so planted. That really is the word that sums up this bike. Planted, solid, stable, steadfast. But it won't suit everybody. Although I do think if you're a roadie coming to gravel with no background in off-road riding or mountain bike experience. The geometry of this bike, while it feels very strange at first, compared to most other gravel bikes, and certainly a road bike, is a massive skills boost and a big skills compensator because it makes riding rocky, challenging trails a lot easier than most gravel bikes. So while it might feel strange at first, once you get used to it, you'll find yourself riding trails you might never have imagined you get down in one piece before. A bit of a blemish is the smoothness of the bike isn't absolutely amazing. The front end is quite hard and there's quite a bit of feedback coming through the handlebars on certain trails when they're kind of rutted and it's dried out hard like it is now. But I go to a wide tyre I can run low tyre pressures, although I'm already on 25 front and 30 at the back. But I could fit a redshift suspension stem because we have a normal handlebar stem set up. So that's a nice, easy fix. And that skinny seat pose is giving quite a good amount of uh, comfort uh, through my bum. And I think an uh, upgrade to a carbon seat post might even boost that even more. And you can fit uh, an ergon seat post or a suspension seat post for even more comfort. So. A bit of redshift front and rear suspension on this bike, I think would make the, the ultimate bike packing gravel adventure bike. If I go and bike packing for a week, 
or doing one of these long distance gravel epics like the Tracker in Girona recently, this will be a good option. That geometry to look after you, you can adjust it to suit your preference. Lots of bags and bottle mounts as well. I think the bike that would be perfect for that sort of big distance epic adventure. So the Assassin is a really interesting take on the gravel adventure bike genre and it will be fascinating to see how bikes do evolve over the next few years whether more bike brands and people want a bike going in this sort of direction with a very progressive long slack geometry and that adjustability as well. I do fear that some people might find it too much complexity and too much choice but if you are into tweaking and fiddling with the bikes yourself you will like how the bike lets you kind of modify it and personalize it to your your preference so a really interesting bike but let me share some likes and dislikes after riding the bike for the last few months i love the fact the bike has loads of mounts for mud guards and extra bags and bottles ideal for any bike packing adventure you might take the bike on. We've got a molded bash guard down there on the down tube to protect the carbon frame from rocks flying up from that front wheel. A really nice feature on this bike. We've got really sensible cable routing, internal, being fit to any group set, mechanical or electronic, with ports for all different options there. And small rubber plugs to keep the cables from rattling. I love the round 27.2 mil seat post with an external seat clamp better than a fiddly internal clamp and you can fit a dropper seat post as well and if you have a di2 group set you put a battery in the down tube we have a t47 threaded bottom bracket which makes loads of sense on a bike like this for easy home maintenance there isn't really much to dislike about the bike but there are only four frame sizes which might be limiting depending on where you fit on their size scale if you fall between the cracks or two different sizes or are too short or too tall for their size range while the tire clearance on the bike is pretty generous, I think it could be even better. Space for 50 or wider would be nice to see, for more options to future-proof the bike and to give even more clearance, especially when riding in the mud. It would be nice to see a chain stay protector there just to protect the paint from a chain bouncing around. I've not had any problems so far because it's nothing dropped, but that would be a nice detail to match the bash guard on the down tube. So should you buy it? Well, it's definitely a bold bike with some really cool features and a very distinctive ride character that would definitely appeal to those people really trying to push these bikes to their limits or take on some big epic bike packing adventures where the handling and the adjustability of the bike will be a key factor and a benefit over more road focused gravel adventure bikes. So hopefully you enjoyed the review and found it useful. Got any questions, feel free to put them down below in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe as well by hitting that button right there. And if you want to see some more of the best gravel bikes currently available, then watch this video right up here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.